Le Mans. For 51 weeks a year, it's a quiet, friendly city in the heart of France, far away from the hectic of Paris. But then, for one week in the middle of June, Le Mans becomes the mecca of auto racing. It's the center of the sports car world. The 24 Hours is one of motor racing's major events each year, right up there with the Formula One race in Monaco and the Indianapolis 500. There's plenty of tradition in Le Mans. This includes the technical inspection of the car. It happens some five days before the start. The long process makes sure that everyone has a fair chance. Each car will be closely inspected to make sure it meets the regulations. a welcome moment for the fans. They get a chance to see their favorites up close. The technical inspection takes on a county fair atmosphere. While some 250,000 fans pick out their favorite places around the course, the 52 teams from the Le Mans prototype and GT categories get ready for the big race. Prototype facts and figures, 880 kilograms, 540 horsepower, an 80 liter gas tank, and a maximum tire width of 16 inches. The 12 cylinder Ferrari World Sports Cars are in the field. Just seven prototypes with Porsche bi turbo motors. Teams from Yost, Kramer, and Karaj have the power plant and gearbox from Super. One team with a good chance for the overall victory, last year's winner, Porsche Team Yost. It's a certainty that you can only win when you have no problem. Just add gas and change tires. These are the only time you should be in the pits. Otherwise, it just has to keep on rolling. In fact, this year, it will have to roll quicker, two or three seconds faster on average. Das Tempo, ich schätze doch schon mal, dass es so drei Sekunden pro Runde im Schnitt schneller geht, zwei bis drei Sekunden als letztes Jahr. Most insiders feel that the overall victory will come from the GT1 class this year. Facts and figures, 650 horsepower, about 1,000 kilograms. 100 liter gas tanks. Anti-lock braking systems. and a maximum of 14-inch tires. This category will probably come down to a three-way battle between Porsche, McLaren, and Nissan, and also the Porsche with the small six-cylinder bi-turbo motors. against the big BMW V12 motors and the Nissan V8 by turbo motor. The GT2 cars don't have the same horsepower. These are the customer teams from Porsche or the French Coreca team with the Chrysler Viper. Now it gets serious. The first time practice session. Ready for the start on Saturday afternoon. Everything. on the front starting positions. The fastest
Williams car in pre-qualifications, the Nissan R390, with Martin Brundle driving. It could only qualify seven. Surprisingly strong, the Scuderia Italia, with the customer 911 GT1, it qualified sixth, and was only a half a second slower than the first of the factory Porsche GT1s. The best of the six McLaren BMWs was the number 42 factory car with a fourth place starting position. The third best time went to the Nissan and Eric van der Poel. Not surprisingly, the best GT car was the factory Porsche of Hans-Joachim Stuck, Bob Wallach and Terry Butzen of Belgium. They used their qualifying time. Terry Butzen in the 911 GT1 was powerless against the Joost Porsche prototype. Michaela Alvareto used the qualifiers to record a time two seconds faster than any other car. Uh, the race is another story because we have a, a lot of uh, more uh, problem on the consumption. We have a very small fuel tank, so the um, lap time on the race will be much, much slower and uh, probably the GT are a little bit more competitive for the race. The setup will continue to be improved during the night practice session. Course officials don't have an easy time at night, particularly when there's oil on the track. The drying agent has to be put on. And then there's just enough time to jump aside when a car comes in just a little bit too fast. Such as here, when number 49, Lotus GT1, comes through. This is the end of a quick lap for the other driver.
Sur le soft Porsche numéro 26 qui avait tourné en 3,52, alors que je vous rappelle, son meilleur connu de 3,45, on a changé tous les moyens sur le tableau de bord, ce qui permet de... The private golf team McLaren BMW number 40 wasn't having the best of luck.
Men er der kommet olie ud af motoren? Vi har ikke rigtig fundet ud af det endnu. Men olie, olien er i hvert fald hvad hedder det, er der gået ind i, og varmen har simpelthen ødelagt kulfiberen, som bilen er bygget af. Og kulfiber det bliver til pulver, hvis det bliver for varmt. Og det er ødelagt hele sæsonen, og derfor er vi nødt til at sige, at det er mange år, det kører vi. avec euh, la porte et son qui me ressemble qu'il y avait fait. Det er meget, meget spændende. Jeg er utrolig glad for, for chancen. I kender hverken bilen eller banen, men det har været en stor oplevelse indtil videre. Nej, men altså det er, det er i hvert fald allerede, for jeg har faktisk jeg har kørt øh, 21 omgange hernede nu, og der har jeg kørt de, øh, de 16, 17 af dem i, øh, i mørke eller om aftenen, eller i tusmørke eller, eller i helt i, øh, i nattelys, så det har, været, det har gået fint. Jeg har kørt min hurtigste tid indtil videre, der har jeg kørt konstant om natten, så det, øh, det ser positivt ud. Nej, altså, jamen, altså det, er, det er selvfølgelig anderledes, men altså det, det, er, jo, det er jo en bil, altså det man skal vende sig til, det er, den er, er selvfølgelig en del downforce, som man, man skal udnytte sammen med, med carbon-bremserne. Og øh, selvfølgelig er min bremse på, og det er dem, jeg har gået forsigtigt frem med, men øh, det, det er allerede i orden, og det skal blive endnu bedre op, øh, op til løbet. Så er det klart, at det er en øh, motor med meget torque, en Porsche-motor med turbo, øh, som man selvfølgelig skal... Øh, vi også skal, skal vende sig til, men altså det, 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 det er mere det, at man skal vende sig både til en ny bil og en ny bane på samme tid. Uh, men uh, det, er, det er godt, som jeg regner med, og det er godt. Uh, ja, altså det er jeg sikker på, at det vil være en ulemme også, fordi at vi, jo, vi jo skal stoppe, og vi har kun 80 liter benzin med, hvor at, uh, GT1-bilerne har 100 liter, og øh, vi går lidt langsommere end de biler på langsiderne. Det vil sige, at vi skal vinde vores tid i, i, i sag i svingene, og omgangstiderne skal jo der er ved at være hurtigere. Og hvis der regner, så er det klart, at den friktion, der vil, der vil komme mindre friktion i regnvejret, der vil komme GT1-bilerne til gode. Nej, det er, jeg vil gerne have det bliver rigtig varmt solskin, også om natten, <laughs> fordi vi sidder åbent, vi har ikke så varmt i bilen, uh, men den er selvfølgelig hård at køre fysisk med hensyn til, til bremse og styretøj, som, uh, som der ikke er, er noget hjælpemiddel til noget som helst, det er, det er bare kroppen selv, ikke? men uh, hvorimod at en bil som Nissan, som er turbo, den er meget varm at køre i, uh, ligesom Porsche uh, GT1 bilerne. Både mod McLaren, de selvfølgelig ikke har det knap så varmt som dem, men øh, vi har det i hvert fald dejligt ude i det fri. Ja. Nu er det meget, det er meget fedt, at du kan lide at køre den her bil, så du har ikke haft tid til at gøre noget med din egen fysik eller egne forberedelser til det. 
om øh, okay, jeg vil nok have, måske have gjort det på en lidt anden øh, greve. Det er det hele andet på en anden måde, men altså, når man får en chance nu for, så siger man selvfølgelig, ja, jeg er fit også. Øh, jeg kører <laughs> Formel 3000, altså det er, det er, det er, det er, det er jo hårdere at køre over øh, en enkelt omgang i Formel 3000, der er kørt den her. Men problemet er bare, hvis jeg kører den her i 24 timer. Ja. Øh, så øh, på den måde, så, så vil jeg godt have trænet noget mere med henblik på det, på det løb her. Men da herr Jøst, han, han gav mig chancen i sidste uge, så er det bare med at sige ja. Og så gør det så godt som muligt. Der er ikke noget komfort, nej. Der, det, det ryster og brager. Der, det, det er der ikke, men du er koncentreret på opgaven, og det, det er det vigtigste. South American atmosphere in France. Samba music scantily clad dancers performing in the traditional parade at the start and finish straight in Le Mans. Saturday at Le Mans, the starting grid. There are about two hours before the start and it's party time on the start finish straight. Bands and dance groups entertain the fans and drivers. This is also a tradition at Le Mans. It adds to the legend. Team in practice, the Jurst Team prototype from Germany, car number seven. They won here last year. The driver, Michaela Alvareto, the former Formula One driver. The last minute before the start of the warm-up lap. Heavy concentration and the adrenaline starts to flow. before four, it becomes serious. The warm-up lap. And as it was last year, there's a Porsche prototype on the right and a Grand Touring car on the left. We're moments away from the start. 48 cars ready to run twice around the clock, almost 5,000 kilometers, 3,100 miles. And we're underway. Michaela Alboreto in the Jurst Porsche against Bob Wallach in the Porsche GT1. Bob Wallach leads, then comes Eric van der Poel in the number 22 Nissan and Michaela Alboreto in the Jurst Porsche. The battle for position continues throughout the field. Bob Wallach sets the pace in the number 25 as the field starts to separate. Through the first chicane, the Porsche GT leading. Then comes the Jurst Porsche followed by the Nissan. Bob Wallach starts to pass away and behind him Van der Poel takes on Alvaretto trying to pass for second place. He does. The battle for seventh place, Emmanuel Collard in the second factory Porsche with JJ Lecto in the first factory McLaren is ahead of him. The cars are setting a very fast speed here and it's only the first lap. This is a demanding course. It's a demanding race on these cars. And that they're going this fast, this early, shows the type of race that could be ahead. Behind the top three, the field is very tight. The rules for the prototypes and the GT cars is working here, at least in the beginning of the race. Each group is competitive, at least on paper. As the field sorts itself out, Bob Wallach continues to lead. Van der Poel is second, and Alvaretto is running third. DDA Tice is fourth in the Ferrari, Lecto is fifth in the McLaren, and DDA Kotas sixth and Emmanuel Collard is running seventh.
This promises to be a tight race. Bob Wallach continues to dominate. You can see the lead that he has. The second and third place cars are starting to get tighter. It's the Nissan followed by the Yerst Porsche. This is your leading trio. It couldn't be better for the fans. Two GTs of different makes and then a prototype. There's something here for the new endurance fan as well as the traditionalists. Ferrari is sitting fourth with DDA Tice driving. Manuel Collard in the Porsche is fifth after passing Lexo in the McLaren. We're now in the third lap. Alvareno is making the move on Van de Poel and outbreaks him to take over second place. These cars are driving on the limit and we just started. so much race ahead and so much wear and tear and yet the first few laps have become a sprint race. The prototype Porsche is starting to challenge the GT1. The Ferrari leads the next group. Then comes Collar, Lecto and the Kramer Porsche with Christophe Boucher. Alboreto now looking to take over the lead, and he does. A prototype is out in front, thanks to a great use of the slipstream. It's two Porsches and a Nissan in the opening moments of Le Mans. Indianapolis, the top speed curves. Alboreto, Wallach, and then Van der Poel. Some of the most famous scenery in racing with historic names. Collar has now moved up to fourth place. Then comes the Ferrari, the Kramer GT1, and the McLaren of Lecto. much space between them. This is tight racing. This is tight racing in the endurance field. That's what makes it amazing. The first car goes out. Harry Toivonen in the BRM loses a motor after six laps. And the first of the leaders comes in. The Ferrari of DDA Tice coming in after just nine laps. Emmanuel Collar comes into the pits for gas. He comes in two laps ahead of his team car. For strategic reason, the team wants to separate times between the two cars. Two laps later, as planned, Wallet comes in for gas. Tires will be changed every two drivers' turns. The Yerst Porsche, the successful car from 1996, is right now out in front here at Le Mans. Many had felt that the prototype would not be as competitive this year, and yet there it is, leading everyone else. Here's the battle for third place. Lecto in the McLaren gets by Van der Poel in the Nissan. This for third. Lecto is a previous winner of the Le Mans 24 Hours. He won it in 1995. Naturally, he'd like to be a two-time winner. The problems start early. The Lister storm of Jeff Lee loses parts of the car. He'll have to head to the pits and hope that nobody runs over all the spare parts he left on the track. 
Alvarado comes in for gas. Tires will be changed here every third turn as compared. Sitting in second place behind the Yurst Porsche is the Porsche GT1 of Yannick Dalmas, who happens to be driving with an injured hand. One lap back is Christian Pascatori in the Scuderia Italia GT1. Dalmas is a veteran of Le Mans. In fact, he's won here three times. He won in 1992 in a Peugeot, and he won in 1994 and 1995, once in a Porsche, once in a McLaren. Third is the factory McLaren with Steve Silver behind the wheel. The McLaren can't make the speed of the Porsche, but they can remain one lap longer on the track on each turn. After two hours and 40 minutes, problems for the Nissan. Number 21 comes into the pits for repairs. Norg Miller is the driver. Team boss Tom Walkinshaw, who flew in from the Grand Prix in Canada, starts to worry. This seems to be a major repair. A short while later, the second Nissan comes in for a stop with oil cooling problems. One hour of lost time. But that's still better than the two hours lost by the other team car. It isn't going much better for Steve Soper in the McLaren. A water hose is torn. 30 minutes of repair. The dream of victory has disappeared. After three hours of racing, the leader, the factory Porsche GT1, Yannick Dalmas, Ralph Kalliners, and Emmanuel Kolar. They passed the year's Porsche as it came in for a routine pit stop. <laughs> Kalliners laps the customer Porsche GT1 of Jabouy and Boresh and a Panos of David Price Racing. And here you have a front side seat of the racing at Le Mans. Le Mans history started back in 1923. And when you consider 33 cars started then, 48 are limited to start here now. Stefan Johansson in the Joost Porsche has to stop his chase after Stuck because it's time to pit for gas. Johansson, another of the drivers, looking for his first victory at Le Mans. But right now, any victory he's thinking of depends upon his crew to get him back out in time. Stuck can't use his top speed in the chase after JB Porsche of Olivier Tevinon. These two cars are equal on the straight. Even trying to use a slipstream doesn't work for Stuck. Le Mans features a number of very experienced drivers, but is he going to be able to get by? Side, and with that line and out breaking him takes over the spot Terry Bootson gets ready in the Porsche pits for his turn on the track Stuck comes in for the pit stop the driver change fix the tires the gas has already been added the Porsche is running like clockwork Pits down, Tom Walkinshaw's worries continue to grow. The number 22 Nissan is back in the pit with more oil cooling problems. Number 27, the BMS Scuderia Italia Porsche in the gravel at the S's. Right after the start and finish line, Antonio Hermann lost control of the car. Now they've got to get it out of the way. Taking another look at it, he was all by himself. Simply lost control and brought his race day to an end.
In third position, Stefan Johansson in the Erste Porsche is followed by Steve Soper in the McLaren. He's eight laps back. Soper may be that far back, but he will try to bring the car forward as fast and as smoothly as he can. The race is 24 hours long. He doesn't have much of a chance, it would seem, but then again, you never know. The Jurs Porsche, which is right ahead of him, continues to run well. It had started on the pole, it has led, but it's also been sitting back in the field. And right now, it has to go about the job of going by a lap car. A typical picture at Le Mans, the long straight, and the battle for position. Finally, at the breaking point, the Yurst Porsche uses its advantage and gets by. Steve Silver will have to do it next. In the standing, six cars in the same lap. In fact, the top six see only three minutes separating number one from number six. Agari Suzuki in the Nissan takes a trip through the gravel. Luckily, he was able to keep the car going. He's back on the track, but he's dropped all the way back to 33rd place. Behind three leading Porsches comes the Gulf McLaren in fourth place. Drivers have had quite a chase behind them. And this has not been the easiest of races for them. You could say it's been a continual uphill battle. The two factory Porsche GT1s are now in formation. Terry Boots in number 25 ahead of Emmanuel Pilar in number 26. The third place Jurst Porsche is now 50 seconds behind. The rest of the GT cars are at least a lap behind. This formation up front, though, has justified Porsche's six months of preparation for the historic 24 hours of Le Mans. This is what every team dreams of. Smooth and identical driving styles by the drivers. You can tell by the exhaust flames while they're shifting. In the Yurst pit, Tom Christensen gets ready for his first turn in the car. The pressure is on the first time driver. Emmanuel Collar has the fastest lap at this point in the race. There's a full house in the Nissan pits. All three cars are in for service, both large and small. This stretches the crews to the limit. Fifth place, Eric Ellery in the McLaren is trying to catch up with the Golf McLaren. It's running in fourth place. Ellery had an accident in practice. The team has been working on the car to get it toward the front ever since. They too have had an uphill battle here at Le Mans. The Viper of Soyai Ayaria, former 3000 driver, catches fire after a collision with the wall. He gets out okay. It's now a matter of trying to get the fire out. Here's what happened. He got backwards into the wall, obviously ripping the gas tank the fuel hit the hot pipes, and the fire started. Luckily, he was quickly out of the car. Then, more problems. A McLaren 
at Tetra Rouge. Bob Wallach is lucky to get by. Watch this. The car comes off the wall, just missing Wallach as he goes by. The night takes over at Le Mans. This is the most difficult time. This is where experience pays off. The driver who knows the course well here can make up a lot of time. After six hours, four cars within three minutes of each other here at Le Mans. Le Mans at night. For the fans, it's party time, all the time. For the teams, it's continued hard work in the pits and on the track. The fascination of the night adds to the legend of Le Mans.
Le moteur respire, mais tout cela. In the morning, the battle for the overall lead is even tighter. The Yurst Porsche puts a lap on the factory Porsche GT1. It's becoming routine to see a Porsche out in front. The Yurst Porsche continues to surprise everyone. It's a customer car, but it's a super customer car. Then the shock. 7.45 a.m., the leading Porsche falls out after dominating the race. The Pope is was in the car. He had lightly touched the wall and had tried to go on. Then it became more difficult to drive. We didn't know what happened. Possibly the differential or the shaft. We'll have to look when the car comes in. Is everything okay with number 26? Up to this point, technically no problem. They're doing very well. It's the car that we still have to play. The team car number 26 had led for some 2,500 kilometers, over 1,500 miles, with Hans Joachim Stuck, Terry Butzen, and Bob Wallach driving. They had left their mark on the race. But now the race is in the hands of Emmanuel Collard, Yannick Dalmas, and Ralph Kellner. They're out to continue the Porsche dominance at Le Mans in 1997. In third place behind the two Porsches, the Golf McLaren number 41. In fourth place, the factory McLaren of Cox, Rivalia, and Ellery. Of that trio, only Ellery has won here at Le Mans. He did it in 1993. It's 8.15 a.m. 
JB Porsche, the second best customer car, goes out. It has motor problems. In the Nissan pits, two of the three factory cars have now called it quits. Basically, we have a, a gearbox problem due to overheating. Um, essentially, we stopped one of the cars to try and concentrate on the other two, and then having had the small accident with the uh, second car, with Jörg, we then decided to stop that car as well and concentrate on the one car and have everything we needed with that one car and devote an effort to making the Nissan car finish higher up the field. The dropouts continue. JJ Lecto in the factory McLaren hits the wall and spins at the Molesane corner. And when you look at the damage, you know the mechanics have a lot of work ahead of them. Lecto's dream of winning once again at Le Mans is not going to happen. After all the dents in the car, the final dent is a big one. Lecto brings the car into the pits, but then has to give up. The chassis is damaged. At the beginning of the start-finish straight, the Habitur Porsche loses a rear wheel. It had been leading the G2 class. The crew works feverishly after losing two laps to get it back in the race. This is one of the most demanding races ever. 26 of the 48 starters have fallen out of the race. Good drivers, but even better preparation by the mechanics and engineers make it possible for these cars to be out in front here at Le Mans. The Yerst Porsche comes in for an unplanned pit stop. The front hood has been damaged. It has to be changed. The team now is trying to make up the difference to the factory Porsche GT1. But this will certainly not help them at all. The work is fast, but it's not filled with panic. Everyone knows what they have to do. And finally, it's ready to go once again. Yeah, but the... Once again, the Yerst Porsche, it's running second. And right now, Stefan Johansson is behind the wheel. The car seems to be running well, but the Golf McLaren of Pierre-Henri Raffinelle is starting to close in on him. McLaren is nine seconds back. Nineteen hours have been completed. The factory Porsche GT1 is almost two laps ahead of the Yerst Porsche. The number 26 continues the dominance of the number 25. The factory cars are five seconds faster than the 96 cars. Le Mans has taken on a different character this year, a character of speed. Porsche is now playing it safe. A major service coming up. Gas, tire change, brake pad change. And Damas will hand over to Ralph Kalinars. They want to be sure the car will now make it through. The battle for the lead remains tight, though. The lead actually continues to dwindle or grow after each gas or tire stop. The Yerst Porsche continues to roll and gets ready to go by some of the slower cars. At 1.43, a decisive moment. The Porsche 911 catches fire and then rolls off the course. Driver Ralph Kellners waits what seems to be an eternity and then is out of the car. 
he's not injured. He is disappointed. The lead car now belongs to the track crews. The Porsche pit is in shock. Motorsports can be miserable at times. The dominating car in this year's Le Mans is out. After 4,500 kilometers, almost 2,800 miles, the Porsche 911 GT1 is out. A year's work is gone in a minute. It's total shock. This is a good one. First, uh, I go on the back straight into the second chicken. Coming out of the second chicken, I see smoke behind. And I'm thinking, I uh, wish. And then when I come over the hip, uh, I see smoke, but I cannot recognize the car. And then I recognize Kellenus like this. I recognize the sound like And for us, very, very good. And if that wasn't enough, 15 minutes later, the Gulf McLaren with Andrew Gilbert Scott driving also caught fire. A frightening moment for everyone concerned. The car rolled to a stop just a few meters behind. Free Porsche. The driver gets out okay. The GTC team has had a difficult time at Le Mans. The car of Thomas Bescher and John Nielsen burned up in practice. And now the Eerst Porsche is out in front. It has a two-lap lead over the second-place McLaren and a four-lap lead over the third-place McLaren. Last year's winning car is already thinking about the laurel wreath once again this year. I got near a hill. So I was thinking, no way. Then I got over the hill again. Yeah, it's a lot of good. Yeah, but you have uh, MD also. Uh, but who is the net? Yeah, who pet? Okay. Jamen nu er bilen, der er ikke nogen, der er ikke nogen problem med bilen nu. Altså over, det er der ikke. Så vi, vi skal bare køre hjem. Men nu ved jeg ikke, om det var den der Lottor, og det var den Golf, der brændte, fordi så... Så er det Raffanel. Ja, jamen så ser det okay. Og så... Så... Så er det til svinger, så tager det sig med. Okay. Ja, du må hilse. Godt. The overall winner of the 1997 Classic, the defending champion, the Porsche Team Jørst. Michaela Alboreto, Stefan Johansson, and Tom Christensen win the hardest endurance race in the world. It's the 15th time a Porsche has taken the title. 17 cars finished the grueling event. 10 of them had Porsche motors. Seven of those finished in the top 10. Happiness for the Porsche Team Jurst, which has now won this classic four times. It was tough. And it was exciting. And there they are, the cars of honor here at Le Mans, the 65th edition of this classic. A classic that once again belongs to Porsche.
It's time to celebrate and honor the winning drivers. And probably nowhere in the world do you see these many fans gathered in one place. Everybody said that the prototype couldn't win, but uh, you are new team. De gagner cette année avec Comparative, c'était très très difficile. La, la seule stratégie d'affaires, c'était pousser un maximum pour forcer les, les, les équipages de, les, de les votre GT à faire des erreurs et d'avoir des failles mécaniques. C'est passé ça et on s'en fait très heureux. En fait, c'était très très difficile de gagner cette année. Nous avons essayé de faire aussi rapidement que nous pouvons. Donc, les GT cars devraient essayer le plus rapidement possible. Et nous sommes très très heureux de gagner cette course. Donc, euh, Michael Elboreto, le bilan d'ensemble sur cette euh, course des 24 heures au niveau de l'équipe du Yost. What uh, the overall result for your team, for the Yost team, about those 24 hours of Le Mans? Ah, euh, Reynold, c'est le, le personne qui peut avoir la plus grande expérience ici pour gagner Le Mans. Il a déjà gagné beaucoup de fois. L'année dernière, je me suis trompé de numéro de voiture. Je n'ai pas choisi le numéro 7. Cette année, je n'ai pas fait cette erreur et nous sommes là. Renaud Loyos is the man who has most of experience in uh, Le Mans last year. I didn't choose the right number, I didn't choose the number 7, but now I choose it and I won. David, s'il vous plaît. Uh, Stefan, uh, back at Le Mans after five years, I think, and um, how does it feel to be here, especially to win, and was this a very tough race? Stefan, vous êtes retour au Mans après cinq ans. Comment sentez-vous, vous sentez-vous après avoir gagné, et est-ce que c'était une course très dure? Yeah, I would say it was a pretty hard race. I mean, as Michaela said, we had to drive really as quick as we could to put as much pressure as we could on the on the GT cars, of course, uh, you know, being a little bit disadvantaged with our fuel uh, situation and so on. Um, to answer your question about Le Mans, of course, it's, for me, it's absolutely one of the, the, the best races in the world. I mean, there's no other place that have the atmosphere that you have here and uh, to win it, I think, is uh, every driver's dream, of course, and it's especially gratifying for me, having raced for so many years now, and it's, uh, you know, I'm at sort of at my pinnacle of my career, and uh, it's a fantastic thing. Uh, Stefan, one other question. Uh, what was your reaction when you looked on the TV screens and you saw number 26 on fire? Quelle était votre réaction quand vous avez vu le numéro 26 en feu sur l'écran de la télévision? Well, I think it's a typical reaction of any any driver. Now, maybe I shouldn't say this, but the first thing you think of is great. 
we gained a spot, but then the next thing you worry about is the driver, of course, is he okay? But, you know, I mean, I'm honest, and that's, that's exactly how I felt. But of course, I was, you know, was glad, happy to see the driver jump out of the car. Bon, je dois peut-être pas avant je l'ai vu sortir. Hein? Uh, Tom, this is your first Le Mans, and uh, you come here and score a victory. Did you anticipate such a debut? Tom, c'est votre première fois ici, et lorsque vous, êtes, euh, vous avez couru ici pour la première fois, vous avez gagné. Est-ce que vous y, vous y attendiez à une telle réussite? Um, I knew I was joining a car which won last year, and the team is incredible, and the driver line was, was all, also good, but we didn't think we could beat the, the DG1 cars, but um, it happened, and the dream really came true. Bon, euh, je savais que j'étais dans une bonne voiture, entouré d'une très bonne organisation, et bien... Um, being a single-seater driver, did you find it difficult to adapt to the different requirements of endurance racing? I've done uh, a little bit in Japan, but not for 24 hours, so, um, I mean, but all the questions I, I asked the team, they, they answered me, and I was trying to do the, do the best I could, because I haven't seen the car before on Monday, actually, so everything was pretty new to me, but um, the drivers helped me a lot with the circuit, and uh, I think it adapted very well. Well, je, je... No flash. Det er ikke, at det er tjernet i, i sort og øh, i hvidt, det er tjernet i guld.